Hi, so in this tutorial, I'm going to be explaining how to um, <clears throat> how to do some basic training, machine learning model, deep learning model on the uh, spam data set. Actually, not a deep learning model. So here for the um, coding project four, we just have um, a simple uh, neural network with one hidden layer. So technically, it's not deep learning, but we're going to try different numbers of hidden units, 10, 100, or 1,000. So let's see if we can code that up using Keras and uh, in R. So in the previous tutorial, we already downloaded the spam data set, read it using data table fread, and then um, converted that into arrays. Here I have x train and x test, y train and y test. Uh, we, d we did a split. Uh, into into 80% uh, train and 20% test. And so now what we're going to do is we're going to um, let's let's go back looking at this classification tutorial in the R interface documentation. And so it's going to show that we have um, this is basically the code that we want to use to define our model, but we need to modify it a little bit. Right, so here we don't need a layer flatten thing because that's for image data that we want to flatten it to a, in, from a two-dimensional array of uh, matrix to a single-dimensional vector. Here, which you're going to keep, the only thing we're going to keep actually is this layer dense, um, with activation equals redu, or actually we can do activation equals sigmoid to be closer to what we have, um, we had in a previous tutorial. Oh yeah, but actually, so here, we do need this last one, right? So hold on, let's, let's go back. Right, so here, what's, what's happening is, um, here, you need a layer for the, hidden units, this is the hidden layer, and this is the output layer, right? So what we're going to do is, um, and actually we need something, um, maybe we need to keep, actually maybe we need to keep this layer, uh, maybe just a layer yeah, maybe layer flatten. Wonder if that works. So here, I think we need to give as input shape here. It's going to be the shape of the input. This is the input layer, right? So let's do that. So the input shape. This is going to be the number of columns in our uh, in our data. So let's just put that in. In call of x train. Matt. Yeah. Then after that, we're going to specify the number of hidden units. So here, let's just do 100. Just actually, let's just do 10 for speed. And yeah, let's use the sigmoid activation function so it could be similar to our previous coding project. And well, actually, I don't know. Why don't we use 100 so that's different from the uh, the output layer? So here, let's define that model. Here. We have layer one, which is a flattened layer, no parameters. I'll put shape uh, 57. Those are the 57 input features. Layer dense two, this is the hidden layer uh, of the neural network. It's got 5,800 parameters because here actually there's going to be a bias or intercept term in addition to the weights. So if you want to do something that more closely mimics what we did in the first coding project, you know, what we can do is we can look here for some completions, and one of them is um, use bias. And so use bias, this is going to be a, uh, well, I don't know, let's just pull this the help page up just so we can take a look. 
But so use bias. Let's go look for that. All right. Whether the layer uses a bias vector. So, um, so that's like an extra um, parameter for every um, input to the layer. And we didn't do that in the coding project. So you might want to just put that to false. It shouldn't make a big difference anyways. But if you want to more closely mimic um, what the um, what we're doing first coding projects, that's what that's what we're doing. Um, yeah, sometimes that's called an intercept in the statistical literature. It's usually called a bias in the in the computer science literature. Anyway, so then the last, uh, if we re redo the model now, we should have 5,700 parameters instead of the 5,800 because we don't have that bias term anymore. Um, and same thing here at the end, at the end. Let's do use bias equals false again to more closely mimic what we did before. Then we have a thousand parameters because it's the ten times a hundred, right? Okay, so yeah, I mean, if we want to train that on um, our data, we can use um, the code that they give in this tutorial. So let's let's try that. Oops. Model compile sparse categorical cross entropy. So uh, I don't think we need to use that. I think we just need to use. Let's take a look at the compile um, in Keras. So. So this is in generic, so well. Uh, maybe we need to, how do we get help about this? Keras models, control. Oh, let's see, generics. Let's go to generics like it says. Compile generics. See the individual methods for specifics, huh? Maybe they have some help on the web page. Let's see. No, they don't. Let's see. Let's try to look at the web page. Tutorials. Actually, maybe it's better to go to the Python documentation here because I think that these keywords that they're using here will be the same between the Python and the R um, documentation. So here we don't want uh, the activation here. Let's just go to the classification tutorial. And um, here, you know, let's search for compile, compile the model. Here, in this case, they use the sparse categorical cross entropy like this. So, yeah, it's not exactly the same. Um, let's just try a Google search. R Keras compile docs. Configure a Keras model for training. See, this is what I want. I'm not sure why we didn't get that. Um, from the R documentation in Emacs, but let's take a look. Name of objective function or function. If the model has multiple outputs, you can use a different loss on each output by passing a dictionary or list of objectives. The loss value that will be minimized by the model will then be the sum of all individual losses. Okay, where is the list of different losses, huh? You know, what we want is the logistic loss. Well, let's just search rkeras loss functions. Losses, keras documentation. Here we go. Let's see. Um, typically, the one that we want is... 
binary cross entropy. That's the same thing as the, um, the sorry, the log the logistic loss we've been using in previous projects. So let's just put that keyword in here because we're doing binary classification. Let's keep the other things constant, optimizer, atom, metrics equals accuracy. Let's see what that looks like. Going back to the R documentation. What we do is we do this model fit step. Here again in the example, we're only doing five epochs. Um, but here now we have to specify the X train map and Y train like we created in the previous tutorial. Here we're doing, let's just keep the validation split the same and let's keep verbose equals two, that'll give us some printed output to the console. Let's see what happens. There we get an error. It says, a target array with shape uh, 3680 was passed an output of shape none 10. While using as loss binary cost entry. This loss expects targets to have the same shape as the output, right? Okay, so indeed, um, we should change this from 10 to two because there's only two classes. I think, is that right? Let's try that again. No, that doesn't work. So I wonder I wonder if we even need to create an output layer. Um, also, you know what we can do is let's do a Google for it. Let's see what Google says. So it says to use binary cross entropy for binary classification, you should have units equals one, sigmoid activation. Uh, so let's do that. Sigmoid activation. And labels should be uh, that size. Yeah, and so that's what we have here. So here, let's change this to one. And see what happens. Yeah, okay, that works. So here we train on 2,576 samples, validate on 1,104 samples. And so we can see that the loss is consistently going down. Accuracy seems to be consistently going up on the training data. On the validation, however, it looks like the loss starts to go down up until the third epoch and then it starts to go up again. Um, so, And the accuracy, you can see something similar. The accuracy goes down to the second epoch. Um, well, so it's going down, up, down, down. So validation, accuracy, and the loss are not saying exactly the same thing, but you can see that there is a little bit of overfitting going on here. Anyway, so this is how we do um, Keras on the spam data set for binary classification. 
So in future tutorials, we'll do some more explanation about um, regularization and overfitting. Thanks for listening.